Let's say we want to model your mental sharpness as a function with respect to time, maybe the, the amount of time after you've woken up. So um, we're going to get a graph and we're going to get an equation that we can write down. And you know maybe we can measure this by keeping track of the electrical activity in some particular part of the brain. And we'll do this for uh, a whole bunch of days and like, decide how to average it out so that we get um, kind of an average mental sharpness for a specific point in the day for all, let's say, 16 hours of the day that you're awake. And so this, this gives us a function for every amount of time we get sort of your, your average, um, your typical mental sharpness for that time. And we can get a graph for it. We can write down the equation maybe. Um, well, we'll use a horizontal axis of T for hours after you've woken up and a vertical axis of let's say M for mental sharpness. And so your graph might look something like this as time goes on and your mental sharpness is going to go up and down. Um, and the function, the actual equation M of T might look something like this. Um, my question is if we take the derivative M prime of T, what does that tell us? And I, I specifically want to ask, what is that measuring geometrically? Nature gives us lots of functions that show up in a variety of areas that we care about. And it's helpful to know what the geometry of those derivatives tells you. Um, it gives you a nice intuitive picture in your head of how that function is behaving, which, which helps you to understand the the quantity that that function is measuring is keeping track of so let's just use a really simple example um, let's just use y equals x squared or f of x equals x squared we know how to take the derivative of that it's really simple um, we know it's just going to be two times x and let's focus in at the point x equals one so at x equals 1, y is going to be equal to 1. We know the graph looks like a parabola that goes through the point 1, comma 1. And we know the vertex is at the origin. If we, if we fix um, our attention on that little point, I want to ask the question, what does the derivative of that function represent at that point? So we said the derivative is 2x. So at x equals 1, the derivative is 2. If you plug in x equals 1, you get 2 times 1. What does that represent on this graph? What could that possibly be measuring for us? Well, I want to think about it. Um, the way that we, we got our pattern or rule for the derivative was to use the definition of derivative or the method of increments to figure out what that was. So let's go back to that definition or that method. Um, if we look at x equals 1, then remember what we need to do is to get the derivative at x equals 1, we need to take the difference in the y values divided by basically the difference in the x values or the difference in the increment um, of the x value. So if you start at x equals 1 and you let that x value go out a little bit, let's say we use an increment of h, so it goes from 1 to 1 plus h, then the difference in those x values is h. That's what we're dividing by. And um, to get... So that gives an average rate of change to get the instantaneous rate of change. We let the h go to zero. So we can write that as the limit as h goes to zero of the difference in the y values or the difference in the x values. And um, if you think about what this is, the difference in the y values divided by the difference in the x values, that ratio is, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so that might ring a bell. Geometrically, we know that's just the slope of a line. It's the slope of the line that goes through those two points. So we don't actually have to use x equals 1 and x equals 1 plus h. Let's just say we're at x1 and then x2. And the difference between them is h. The distance between them is h. Then we really are looking at y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's just the slope of the line that goes between those two points, that goes through those two points. Um, 
It's sometimes called a secant line if there's if you got a curve with two points on the curve and you make a line through it. But when we take the limit as h goes to zero of that slope of that secant line, look at what happens. As h shrinks down to zero, x2 comes back toward x1. x2 approaches x1 and um, the y values are getting closer and closer as well. So if I take the limit as h goes to zero, geometrically that, uh, that secant line, you can see it's swinging down to something else. It's swinging down to a line that only touches the curve at one point, at the single point x1. And uh, if you remember in the terminology for lines that are touching a circle, a line that touches a circle in just one place, just on the edge, and doesn't cross through it, that's called a tangent line. That's the terminology we're going to use here. Um, so when you take the secant line and you let h go to zero, take the limit as h goes to zero, that secant line turns into the tangent line. It limits to the tangent line. So when you take the limit of the slope of the secant lines, you're getting the slope of the tangent line. That's what the derivative is. That's what it gives you geometrically. So one thing that we can use that for is, for example, to find out um, where our function has peaks and valleys. Because if you think of a tangent line, like at a peak, a tangent line will be flat. Or at a valley, a tangent line will be flat. The slope of a flat line is zero. So we can just take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and that will tell us where our function has peaks and valleys, or where it might have peaks and valleys. Um, another thing it can tell us quickly is if that slope of the tangent line is positive, that tells us the function is increasing at that point. And if the derivative is negative, it tells us that the function, the function is decreasing at that point. There's a lot of other information contained in the derivative as well, but um, that's, those are the main points that I wanted to, to show you. Um, so the derivative of a function y equals f of x is the slope of the tangent line at x. And so if you plug in a value of x into the derivative, you get out a number. That number is the slope of the tangent line at that specific x value.